Welcome to Africa to You. I'm Vivian Birchall, your host. This episode provides a glimpse into how African ways of life are environmentally sustainable and less dependent on money and industrial products. Perhaps this contributes to many cultures on the continent being labeled as primitive or poor. For centuries, Africans' way of life has rotated around making friends with nature in various ways that sustain the livelihood of the people. Communities are aware of what natural resource th resources they have and creatively use those resources for their survival. In many traditional African societies in Sub-Saharan Africa, the communities engaged in numerous activities involving music, dancing, sports and weaving. These activities continue to be supported by the environment which provides raw materials for traditional African instruments, costumes, tools and toys. Many of these are made out of plant and animal products. Creativity and craft skills were passed on from one generation to another by the parents, clansmen, members of the extended family or elder siblings of the same sex, depending on the skills being taught. It was common for children of the different sexes to learn the same skills until they got to a certain age where boys were expected to take on more, more masculine roles like building huts or dwellings, hunting, carpentry, blacksmithing, work or training as warriors. While girls focus more on crafts that were used in the day-to-day -day activities of the household. These creations and skills were applied to transforming the natural resources into practical tools for the communities. Let me take you through some examples of what I mean. Banana plants are a staple crop in East Africa. This provided bananas for food, fiber for wrapping food, making dolls and bowls for the kids to play, and ropes to help tie things together. Goats. Among keepers of cattle, goats have traditionally been used for storing milk, chaningi, which in the West is referred to as clarified butter, storing homemade moisturizers, and many other things. They were and still are used for serving and storing millet and sorghum beverages in many cultures. Fertilizers. 
During my undergraduate studies, I conducted research on contribution of indigenous knowledge to socioeconomic development with Masaka District in Uganda as a case study. I focused on how indigenous ways of life contribute to the sustenance of communities. One of my findings was that many rural communities use natural fertilizers like animal urine in their gardens. These were non-toxic, low cost, and sustainable since they used animals that were already on their farms. Scrubbing dishes. Washing dishes is a regular activity in any household one might wonder how dishes were washed in societies or communities without dishwashers and soap in rural Africa. I do not know what every culture on the continent used, but I can share my personal and family experience. At my grandmother and mother's homes, as needed, we used the oluwawu, which is in the ficus exasperata category of plants. It is also known as the sandpaper leaf. The main purpose of the luau was to scrub dishes. It works great and does not have to be manufactured. It is also biodegradable since it's a plant and so it does not damage the environment. The stump of the luau tree was used traditionally for making a chinu pestle for pounding peanuts, sesame and other things to make powder for making peanut sauce and paste, which is similar to peanut butter. Baths. Using my experience again, all my life in Uganda, my family and I used a changwe, also known as uh, sponge gourd or vegetable sponge or loofah, to, the, to scrub our bodies. The sponges have become popular in the West where they are commonly bought at stores rather than grown at home. In addition, many African communities today have carried on skills of using plants to make crafts such as woven mats, baskets, dolls, toys, back cloth, and many other things that are significant to everyday life. So, this has been a brief intro into the way African societies relate with nature. Imagine family life where the community uses plants, animals, and nature in general in the day-to-day -day activities. Imagine not having to go to any stores to buy these things. The amazing part is that all these products are kind to the environment because they are biodegradable. Teaching morals. The natural environment also provided themes for storytelling and poetry usually around a fire in the evenings, shortly before dinner. These stories encourage ethical and moral behavior. For example, among the Banyankore and the Vachiga people in Western Uganda, there is a poem that children were taught to encourage them to work for what they ate. It goes, Chichere, zakuhinga, tinyina gahinga, chichere, Zakushenya, tinyina gashenya, chichere, zakushoroma, tinyina gashoroma, chichere, ijaturie. Kanfe kuguru cherandere. Literally translated, this is a story between somebody and the frog, uh, someone and a frog. They were, telling, they were telling the frog, frog, go to dig. The frog says, I do not have energy to dig. Frog, go fetch firewood. The frog says, I do not have energy to fetch firewood. Frog, go pick vegetables. The frog says, I do not have energy to pick vegetables. Then the person says, frog, come let's eat. And the frog says, okay, let me just try to hop around and see. <laughs> I hope Today's episode has taught you something new about the way of life of the African people. You can contact us with your questions at africatu.vivian at gmail.com. Visit us at our website at africatu.org. 
and or our Facebook page at africatu.acton at facebook.com. You can also visit the Acton TV website at actontv.org. Thank you for watching. Till next time.